year. We talk about things we nailed this year and things we were wrong on. Uh, so great to have you back. Huge bowl games tomorrow, late afternoon, rolls bowls and stuff like that. That's tomorrow. Today, there's a ton of NFL stuff. Any story that breaks, we'll have it for you. There's currently eight coaching openings. We'll talk about that. Keep your eye on Jim Harbaugh. I want to talk about the Dallas Cowboys yesterday. Dak had four touchdowns, and Dak led them to a meaningless win over the New York Giants. He did have a good play late. He tends to be a little better late in games than early. But I'm noticing something in football. All the stat talk. I'm not into stats. Stats is baseball. All the baseball nerds. They want to talk about WHIP and DMV and WAR, and I don't know what half the stuff means. Football's never been about stats. I don't care about Tom Brady's stats. He wins playoff games and gets to Super Bowls. I don't even need you to win all your Super Bowls, but I want you to get there. Football's never been about nerds. It's alpha males, big men imposing their will. I beat you. Baseball is analytical, and it's a thinking man's game, and there's no clock and no real urgency, and there's a zillion games. Football's about winning games, bro. I want quarterbacks who win games. All I watched yesterday is all these stats coming out now. Oh, this guy did this, and this guy did this. There's one with Dak Prescott. He has 30-plus wins, 25 or fewer interceptions in his first three seasons. That's an NFL record. Yippee. Fit yourself for a yellow jacket in Canton. Nobody cares. Russell Wilson will face Dak this weekend. Russell Wilson's way better. He doesn't have that record in his first three years because he didn't have the, he didn't have what Dallas had. He didn't have a Zeke. He didn't have that sketch. He was going up against Harbaugh and the Niners and Aaron Rodgers and his prime. And can we stop the stat talk in football? First of all, there's no context. The the, the new NFL. They've, they, you, they've totally handcuffed defense. All the quarterbacks are setting records. I didn't, I didn't even mention the day that Sam Darnold became the first 21-year-old to throw for 300 yards in an NFL game. I didn't even mention it. Finally did. Who cares? Doesn't make Sam Darnold anything. It means the league now is a passing league. By the way, if you want to go stats, Kirk Cousins this year finished with 30 TDs, 10 picks, 70% completions, 10th in passing yards, and 100 passer rating. You want Kirk Cousins starting your quarterback for a big football game? Football is about winning games. And I'm seeing this all the time now. Three words, folks. Trust your eyes. I don't give a rip that Notre Dame's undefeated. They don't look like Clemson. That's why I bet my 401k on Clemson this weekend. I don't care that Westbrook wins the MVP. He's not half the player of Kawhi Leonard. Forget LeBron. I don't care that Dak set a record yesterday. He's not even close to Russell Wilson. Stats are for baseball. Stats offer no context. Stats make Kirk Cousins great. Stats tell you that the best three-year quarterback in league history is Dak Prescott. He's a nice kid, but the stuff I like about him isn't even football. It's intangibles. He's tough. He's a leader. Tends to be better late in games than early. Don't love his arm at all. Statistically, he's middle of the Packer blow and everything. And that's with a good old line, a star running back, a number one wide receiver, continuity in coaching, and the best front seven in defense in the league. But you get him on the road, under 100 yards rushing, defense doesn't play well, they got shut out by the Colts. You know how hard it is sometimes with all those weapons they have? This is not a rebuilding team. This is a real team with stars everywhere to get shut out. Dallas sat Zeke yesterday. Why? Because Zeke doesn't have anything to prove. Why did Dallas play Dak? Get him some reps. So we, we have, I'm seeing this Trust your eyes in sports. This isn't baseball. Who gives a rip about Westbrook's stats? He's not half the player of Kawhi Leonard. I don't care that Notre Dame's undefeated. They don't even look like Clemson. They shouldn't even be on the same field as Clemson. I don't care about Dak or Baker's numbers or Sam Darnold threw for blankety-blank yards at 21 years old. There are four quarterbacks in this league, that is it, that can carry average players carry them to the playoffs. And they're my bore four, Brady, Breeze, Luck, and Wilson. They don't have big personalities. They probably don't hold a bunch of records, although Brady's been around forever. I'm sure he does. Those guys take average rosters and average receiving cores and bad offensive line and carry teams into the playoffs. And don't give me Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is sitting home again. Second year in a row. That's it. I am over 
all these stats suddenly. Maybe it's fantasy football. And by the way, I don't play fantasy football. I bet games. I don't play fantasy football. I like that you play fantasy football because anything that gets people emotionally involved in football, I'm for. I love that you love fantasy football. I think it's great. It's good for my business. It's good for Joy and I. People are all emotional with football. I love it. But it's creating this goofy, weird, look at that number and look at that record and look at that. And Dak's got 30-plus wins and 25 or fewer interceptions in his first three seasons. <clears throat> and with all those weapons he's got, got shut out against the Colts. And with all those weapons, why were they playing him yesterday and not Zeke? Trust your eyes. That's the truth. Not a baseball war, slugging percentage. Watch the games. Trust your eyes. You can see who can play and who can't. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Just for the record, I won one of my leagues this year. You won one of your uh, fantasy leagues? Yes. Came in third in the other one, but we're not going to talk about that. Well, that's not terrible but either. I, uh, but I didn't sub out Matt Ryan not once. <laughs> Matt Ryan right to the championship. Oh, so that should w- tell you <laughs> everything you need to know about fantasy Did you football. have him in both leagues? Uh, no, I didn't. I oh, didn't. Right. Um, but, he, you know, he did well for me this year. All right. So six NFL coaches have been fired following the regular season. There yeah. are eight openings now. It ended uh, with firings across the league. The season did. Six head coaches have been let go since yesterday. Yeah. The other two openings are obviously with the Browns and the Packers, who both fired their coaches midseason. Yeah. Todd Bowles, Adam Gase, Hugh Jackson, obviously Vance Joseph, Dirk Cutter, Marvin Lewis, Mike McCarthy, and Steve Wilkes have well, all been fired this year. Can I just tell you the two I think um, I think Mike McCarthy is going to get another job and should. And I'll tell you this. Um, Adam Gase is interesting. You spent a lot of time in Miami. Do you know he won 13 of his last 24 games with Ryan Tannehill? I'm just saying, I- I'm not saying he's Belichick. McCarthy's proven he's a good coach. He'll get a job. Adam Gase, keep your eye on. Just keep your eye on Adam Gase. You know, Gase. the thing with Adam Gase is he came in with this uh, aura about him because he was the uh, he was the Jay Cutler whisperer, yes. right? So everyone was like, oh, I mean, if he can he get, could get Jake, along with yeah, Jay he Cutler. Cutler, he can, he can make anything yeah, work. Right. Um, and I think that was an exaggeration. Uh, obviously, his time in Miami had some waves with the quarterback situation and yes. Jay Cutler. Yeah. Um, I... Actually, almost all of these coaches are going to get another job because there's not that many qualified college coaches, in my opinion, to fill all of these places. And a lot of these college guys now make more money than NFL guys, so they don't want it. And they don't don't want to go through this. They don't want to go through three years and you're gone when you can stay in college and recruit uh, as much as you want and and, and have job stability and not have to move your family around. Mike McCarthy, obviously, is going to get another job. I think that um, Todd Bowles is going to get another job. Marvin Lewis is interesting because he was with the Bengals for so long and it, it just kind of it, it was I didn't even think about it really like well, the, I, the, the idea of firing, I, I firing su- Marvin Lewis. I've supported him he's the Doc Rivers of the NFL I think he's a good coach I think he's a good guy I think he develops players I think he develops uh young men but it it, it had kind of played itself out and I supported him for years and years, but I do think they need a new voice and a new set of eyes, and that's fine. Marvin doesn't need to work. Marvin's got a pile of money and is really respected and will have all sorts of consulting jobs. Yeah. He could sit home and make a million a year taking phone calls from owners and GMs and answering questions. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm surprised by it, obviously, because they've overall not had much yeah. success there. But it, it just doesn't seem uh, like there's a, much of a future because he's been there for so long. So the Cardinals finished their season 3-13 and after a 27-24 loss to the Seahawks yesterday. And that means they have clinched the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft. They don't need a quarterback. So here is the draft order as of right now. Obviously, trades will move this around. But it's the Cardinals, Niners, Jets, Raiders, Bucks, Giants, Jags, Lions, Broncos, and Bills in the first 10 and if you're looking at it, it's who a, needs a quarterback? You know what? It's interesting, Joy. It's the most defensive-driven draft, they're saying, of all time. The 24 of the top 32 players are defensive players. There is one quarterback who, to me, is a first-round pick. Dwayne Haskins. And I think he, I would keep your eye on him. I Now, again, the Cardinals aren't going to pick a quarterback. The Niners aren't. The Jets aren't. I don't think the Raiders are. The Bucks might. I think the Giants should draft Dwayne Haskins and sit him for a year behind Eli, learn what it's like to be a pro in the NFL. 
I think that kid from Ohio State is better than the scouts think. Go to his last month at Ohio State. He was fantastic. And watch him in the Rose Bowl tomorrow. Go watch him in the Rose Bowl tomorrow and make – listen, if he's bad, I'm wrong. I think that kid at Ohio State is going to shine in the Rose Bowl and we're all going to be going, he could be a number one pick. Uh, well, I mean,